Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I have Working In and Paul with us again today, and it's going to be great because Paul's great and Working In is great. And if you don't know, I've partnered with Working In um, over the last couple of months because they manage the whole visa and job and relocation side and has been amazing. You can ask any of my clients. So welcome, Paul. Thanks for joining us. We're just going to do like a little update on immigration, a uh, little update on kind of the process and just to hear what's going on with uh, moving to New Zealand on the visa side. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, look, Tara, it's great to see you again. It's an absolute pleasure. Um, love doing this. We're, we're helping so many people from America move at the moment. Um, yeah, it's I'm getting so many. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, there's been a big spike and yeah. and long may it continue, you know, mm -hmm. um, people from America are, are a great fit for New Zealand. And so why not? You know, um, so I think to answer your first question around, you know, a quick update as to what's happening in New Zealand. The New Zealand government is definitely doubling down on its previous messaging with all its changes to immigration policy that they really want highly skilled people that New Zealand needs and not so much of the low skilled people that New Zealand can fill with New Zealanders, you know, which right. is right. makes sense, you know, it's fair enough. Um, so, you know, there's, there's, there's some key occupations, engineers, IT, healthcare, education, uh, et cetera. They're, they're like, and construction as well. They're, they're obviously the, the top sectors where highly skilled people are needed. You know, there are there are ways to get in for all sorts of people to New Zealand. So don't let if you're not in one of these occupations, don't let that stop you moving. But um, there there are some clear ways forward for people in these occupations. Right. And I think what we can do in this call as a great example is take one of those occupations, teachers, for example, and just show how that works, because a lot of what applies to the teachers will also apply to uh, other professions as well but I think if we use it as an example in the story then we can actually help people who are watching I mean how's that sound that sounds good like and I and I think that you hit it exactly right because <clears throat> I get so many people that maybe aren't on the green list but that doesn't mean that you can't come it's just that it's not as easy I guess as, as a bottom line and it's not as straightforward and in terms of getting a job and stuff so yeah yeah, yeah. and I think there's one really key message that we're seeing at the moment with a lot of the American people that we're talking to, and this is a word of advice to anyone watching this video, do not burn any bridges before you've got clarity on how to move forward. You know, do not sell your house, give up your yes. job, hop on a plane, etc., until you've got absolute clarity that this can work for you and there is a clear way forward. We are seeing a growing number of people from the USA for you know obvious reasons saying you know what this is it i'm doing it i've sold my house i've done this i've booked my flights that is high risk high risk you could lose everything so please don't do that talk yes. to us first yes before. i talked to two clients that's got to be a clear message because we yeah. are seeing more and more americans that we're talking to doing that and whilst it might work for some people it, it, it's high risk yeah. Okay. And and let me explain the mindset of an American. They just think that they can do whatever they want, wherever they want. That's fair enough. It's like the actual, like they don't understand that you can't just go like, cause like our passport can get you anywhere in terms of travel. Um, you know, we don't, we're not used to that kind of limitations. And so when we think about moving, we're not thinking, oh, that I can't just move there. You can't like, you have to get your visa and your job sorted first. I had two clients this week alone that were like, my bags are packed. I sold my house. I sold my car. And I'm like, Okay. Wow. And we haven't even looked at the visa. <laughs> so yeah. that's the concern. You're totally right about that. And so this is when people come into my community, we get you sorted on the visa and the job with working in, and we get you trained and prepared for the move and exactly how to do it and when to do it. And yeah, that's why we do what we do. All about minimizing the risks, maximizing right. opportunities for the people who want to move and the employer, because that's what gets you a job and that's what gets you a visa. You know, right. that's the, that's the bottom line. So okay. let's have a look at teachers as, as a great example. Right. So there's lots of shortages in, like I say, lots of occupations in New Zealand. At the moment, there's a massive shortage of teachers. Now, when we say massive, Americans might laugh at this. There's 500 vacancies. <laughs> now, by American standards, 
that's probably nothing. You know, what one one city might have 500 vacancies. By New Zealand standards, that's massive, right? Yeah, so we, we need about 500 teachers, mainly secondary school. To give an example of the extent of that shortage, the New Zealand government introduced a relocation grant for teachers who are moving from overseas. And that grant is up to 10,000 New Zealand dollars, which is crazy. Never seen the New Zealand government do this before, right? Wow. So how that works is, obviously, you've got to spend the money getting to New Zealand flights and visa agents and doing everything you need to do. But when you get to New Zealand, you can, if you can show, show receipts and what you've done, you can claim up to 10,000 New Zealand dollars of that money back, you know? Nice. Got so okay. you can pay those fees that people pay for flights, et cetera, whatever, can be claimed back up to $10,000. Now, that's only available for the next 300 teachers <laughs> that are right, right? So there's a budget. There's okay. 300 of those $10,000. And grants. is it just secondary school or is it all teachers, but mainly the focus is secondary? The grants are available to all teachers, but it's mainly secondary where the vacancies are. So if you're a primary school teacher, yeah, absolutely, you can do it. But also the thing with secondary school teachers is they have this route to residency, which is called straight to residency. Oh, straight to amazing. residency is amazing. Yeah. And that's how high school teacher for all of you Americans. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and it's, it, you know, not only school teachers can get this, nurses can get this, engineers can get this, counsellors can get straight to residence. There's, a, oh, there's okay. a whole bunch of people on the green list who are straight to residence. The reason the government has targeted these people as straight to residence is this is the people that they've said we really need. Got it. Okay. okay. So if we what really about, need, okay. let's give them straight to residence. What about like uh, special needs? I get a lot of questions about that, like people that are special ed teachers. Yeah, special ed teachers. Um it's a great question. Um, it, it totally depends. It is it is a skilled occupation, obviously, and it is a way in. Um, I, I would say that if anybody is in that sector of doing special education needs, and obviously it's a massively growing sector around the world. Mm -hmm. As you know, more and more people, because of the way things are going, are getting diagnosed with this, this, and everything else. And then that throws in that, you know, people need special education, these teachers, there's a need for special education, these teachers. I would say if anybody's in that sector, reach out to us, just, just, yeah. just contact us. You can pass me their details. I can talk to them. I can look at their CV, you yeah. know, but generally with, with the teachers and straight to residents, what we're looking at is secondary school teachers in the STEM subjects like science, you know, biology. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Typical ones that everybody's yeah. always looking for. That everyone looks the same with nurses. Everyone needs nurses. Everyone needs engineers. New Zealand's right. no different to anywhere else in the world. We're in a global competition for skilled talent. But what New Zealand's done is said, here's straight to residence. And by the way, if you're a teacher, here's $10,000 if you get here in the next six, nine, 12 months, <laughs> if, if it's still available. OK, so there is a journey, though, that every skilled migrant has to go through. And with with teachers, and this also applies to electricians and healthcare specialists, etc. There is something called New Zealand registration. You mm -hmm. can't teach unless you've got teachers registration, right? Part of that process might be getting your qualification assessed by the New Zealand Qualifications Authority. So this isn't just as simple as here's my CV, fire it off to a school, and we'll give you a job. Okay. Right these things need to be in place as well, or at least have started to be put into place, right. right? So what we've done as a business when it comes to teachers is we've gone, okay, look, we're, we're actually really lucky. One of our staff, Steph, Stephanie, I don't know if you've met Stephanie or you may have been introduced to Stephanie. She's an ex-New ex Zealand school teacher. So she's been through the process. She's one of our journey managers. She knows how this works, right? right. So what we're doing with teachers as an example is, we can provide guidance and support around the registration process. We can provide guidance and support around getting your qualification assessed. Right. We can then basically help place you with a school because what we're doing at the moment is we're going out to all the schools in New Zealand and actually saying, where are these 500 vacancies? Who do you need? How many do you need? You know. Really? So we had a meeting with a school last week in New Zealand. Uh, really interesting the headmaster was like oh wow this sounds great <laughs> you can get me skilled teachers from the usa from from other places etc i tell you what you know i'll take whichever school school teachers you've got 
And he said, shush, don't tell anybody else. <laughs> Because I want them. <laughs> right. So this is a great example of where an employer talking to somebody like us clearly removes the risk for the employer. If you remove the risk for the employer, then that's the way to get a job offer. These schools are getting bombarded with CVs all day long, every day from all over the world. Right. Most of the time they're hitting the delete button because a CV on its own doesn't tell the employer what they need to know. Right. It doesn't tell them if, when, and how you're getting to New Zealand. It doesn't show them that you will get to New Zealand, that you can get to New Zealand, that everything will be okay. Mm -hmm. What employer is going to offer a job if they don't know that everything's going to be okay? Right. That's exactly right. So this, this is, is why this is what these, working in does for you. Yeah. Things on their own doesn't work. You've got to remove the risk for the person moving and the employer. If you don't no, remove the employer, there is no job offer. No, you know? I know. So with teachers, we're doing this this huge thing. So you know, the clear message here is any teachers, any teachers, SEN, primary, secondary, especially secondary, reach out. Reach out. There is a way forward. There is a golden mm -hmm. opportunity. It is a window that will close. Like all occupations, New Zealand has a certain amount of vacancies. It's New right. Zealand. So it's not thousands of vacancies, it's hundreds of vacancies. Right. When those vacancies get filled, they can change the policy around those vacancies. Time is now, if you've ever considered, this is what I've been telling everybody, like, this is your chance. And just to even go for a couple of years and <clears throat> good luck leaving, because it's hard. So many, this is a story that you'll hear over and over as I came. You and me both, you and me both, you and me both, Tara, we've, we've, right. we've temporarily left and it's the hardest thing I've ever done. Oh, Moving hardest thing New Zealand ever. was difficult. Leaving New Zealand was almost impossible to the point and I don't know if you're like this Tat, if 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 you're feeling the same thing right now but I left New Zealand two years ago for family reasons and I can go back to New Zealand as you as can you with right. and we but it has literally taken me over two years to even be able to look at old photographs of me in New Zealand doing stuff in New Zealand it's it's that bad <laughs> Oh, and yeah. and, and we're in the we're in the wrong type of job here to be missing New Zealand because we talk about New Zealand every single day. <laughs> right. right. Totally. Oh, my yeah. gosh. I so agree. And it's just and I can't even tell you guys, I just want to emphasize even just things I've heard this week is people have been trying to get jobs because they just think, oh, I got to go get a job. And then they do their normal process and getting a job. And it's taking a month years sometimes i've had clients this week like it took nine days with working in once they had the piece of paper that said you know, they can get a visa they have a, a, a process to get to new zealand and it's all worked out they just need the job and then they're set and happening happening i have never seen people get to new zealand so quickly like when i came it was like a year year and a half through the process there was three routes now there's so many yeah you, there's more there's yeah. so many that you have to work with a visa agent to kind of wiggle out what makes sense for your actual skills because getting a visa and getting to New Zealand is job-based. You have to get a job and you have to get a job with an accredited employer. So, and working in a credits employer. So like you, it's just really great. Like the whole, it's a one-stop shop. You come in, oh, come yeah. see us and we will get you sorted basically. <laughs> yeah, you just raised a good point there, um, Tara, you know, you know, going away from from teachers for a second we are an accredited employer ourselves and right, that means right. that we've got permission to offer jobs to people from overseas so if you take it professionals for example mm. real high-end it professionals your software developers etc um you know we can actually interview software developers and if we think they're great because we're talking to the employers who want to hire them right we, we can literally offer them a job so that they can get the visa <laughs> Really? And, yeah. And then oh. place them, place them with a company in New Zealand who they'll actually be working for. Oh you know? my gosh. If you're in IT, listen up. Oh if you're gosh. in IT and you're good, high level IT, look, there's all sorts of levels of IT. There's all we levels. Know. Right. We're talking, we're talking top, top level people here, you know, good okay. salaries, good, good experience, et cetera. Not, not your graduates who've just graduated, which is great, but you're in competition with other graduates, people with experience, people with good skills. Yeah, um, there is a way forward there that we're actually we've introduced and it's working and it's great. And it's it's this is where we look at different sectors, different occupations and go, there's the problem. What's the solution? Mm. 
you know, and what is the best solution that works. And don't get me wrong, you, you made a really good point there, which was really nice that some people come with us and they get jobs really quickly and they've been trying for ages to get a job. They got nowhere, then they start with us. And don't it? we've got loads of examples of that. But we do say to people, even when you're with us, expect it to be long, difficult uh, and frustrating. Okay. You know, at right. times you'll feel it's never going to happen. <laughs> but right. what you've got to do is go, well, there's this way of doing it, which takes away all the risks and shows the way forward and, and makes your chances right. of getting a visa. Way totally. Or there's the Internet and firing off CVs, which has right. a success rate of less than 2%. Oh, there's a stat, everyone. There's a stat. <laughs> less than 2% of people who just wow. fire CVs at jobs succeed. Oh, interesting. You know? Okay. Do you want to be in the two percent? <laughs> oh, yeah. To... No, it's true. Yeah, well, you do. Everyone wants to be in the two percent. Do you want to be in the ninety-eight percent that fail, or do you want to be in that two percent that succeed? If you want to be in the two percent that succeed, you've got to do it differently. Now, and... let me just highlight something. Actually, before I do that, actually, why not? Can, I just know that my audience is dying to know about. Can you give me salary ranges, maybe, for teachers? Since we're talking about teachers specifically. Yeah, I think I think as well, sort of going wider than that, salary ranges in general compared to the US, you know, mm -hmm. salaries in the US tend to be a lot higher than New Zealand overall. You know, they do. They just do. Um, but I don't know it, that that's true in teachers. Like I'm in education and higher ed. I got paid double when I get paid here in the US. I mean, OK, OK. My so, husband in IT got paid significantly more there. Yeah, and, so. Oh, yeah okay well that's interesting you know because I'm I'm just basing this on other occupations like welders and stuff like that a welder in the U.S. might get a bit oh, more okay it just depends so teachers generally, in the U.S. get paid nothing they start out yeah. like if you're in like a I, I, I private school like 30,000 wow I yeah. constantly get asked what will I get paid in New Zealand and what I what I compared to what I get paid in the US or compared right. to what I get paid in the UK or wherever I'm from. What we do, obviously, as part of the, the process of working with people and if they get a call with us and everything else, we can talk about salaries specifically for them and what it is. And right. there is actually, if anybody wants to do this, this is a good tip for anybody. There's a really good website, right? If you want the actual stats, not from my mouth, not from your mouth, from the government in New right. Zealand, they survey employers and recruiters in New Zealand okay. say what what are people getting paid right this website is called careers careers.govt.nz okay go on there type in your Put occupation in the description type in your occupation and all the stats will spit out oh okay cool chances right. of getting a job the salary range the work experience you need it's all right. there Right. That's exactly because everybody's always asking. And I don't know every industry. And in general, right. when I ask, like, I know, like, really high end, like doctors, certain psychologists, they definitely are taking a cut. Doctors and stuff, you know, 150, 200,000 dollars. Right. right. You know, it's, it's, it's right up there. Teachers in New Zealand, comparably, like nurses in New Zealand, et cetera, are compared comparably with other first world countries. You know, it's not a third world country that you're moving to. It's a first world country with no, first world no. salaries, with first world cost of living, right. you know. Right. So, you know, um, and and New Zealand salaries for teachers go up in bands. You know, this is where right. us having Steph, who's the next teacher, yeah, yeah. put together all these stats. So if a teacher reaches out to us, for example, we can literally show you the salary bands and everything else, and we can go through it. Obviously, okay. I haven't got them here for the purposes of this call, but we've got right. them. So any teacher that talks to us, we can actually show you, you know, based on your years of experience, based on your qualification, this is the kind of salary you're looking at. And a lot of times when I talk to people, they say, oh, well, that's significantly less in U.S. dollars, but you don't live and function with U.S. dollars in New Zealand, so it doesn't matter. Exactly. It's more comparable to say, if I make 100000 in the U.S. and I make 100000 in New Zealand, the standard of living is about the same. Certain things cost more, certain things cost less. But at the end of the day, my take-home pay was always more in New Zealand. There's a yeah, little and, less and, tax. And the cost of living, you know, I'm I'm back in the UK now, right? And I I probably take home more here now, even though I'm still obviously working with working it, but I'm probably I'm on a good salary here now doing what I do, you know, to be honest. Yeah. But my cost of living is higher. It's higher, right? 
right? So it's not about your what does this cost? What it's what's dis, it's, what's your right. disposable, your disposable income, income at the end of the, at day? The, end of the yep. day? Right. I put I pull this much in. I've got this many bills. What's left? The what's right. left is the important bit, and the way that you live your life. You know, everything in the UK costs money. You want to go and use a public toilet in the UK? It will cost you money. <laughs> you know, totally. and and it's an indoors lifestyle, not an outdoors lifestyle, because mm -hmm. of the weather. Unfortunately. Totally, yeah. It is unusually really hot here at the moment, which is why I look quite hot at the moment, but it's not <laughs> normally like this. You yep. normally are locked indoors because it's raining all the time. All the time. Right. And, you, and if you're indoors, you're spending money. New Zealand's an outdoors lifestyle. So the way you live your lifestyle is actually the key to yeah. cost of living. You know, you can do a whole lot of stuff in New Zealand, as you know, that doesn't cost you anything and is and it's on, the best stuff. Go and sit on a beach and look at Mount Monganui right. or right watch go to the beach go for a hike go for a bike go for a, ride, go for a walk it costs you nothing surf. and it's and it's and it's like mind-blowing right. you know and you can do it every day if you want every day <laughs> totally no i know okay um one other thing i wanted to say was <clears throat> and this is going to be really helpful if you're american is i have i actually talked to a lot of principals a lot of counselors in the schools especially high schools and you know they don't want to they feel like it's a step down to then become a teacher and the way that they view teachers and the way view teachers are treated in the U.S. and just the stress levels and the parent issues wow. and um, <clears throat> people requiring them to teach a certain way. What I try to explain to them is what teaching looks like, feels like, is totally different in New Zealand yeah. than it is in the U.S. Oh. And so you're taking a mindset of understanding and applying it and it's not the same. So like, different. For example, Oops. like in primary school where my son went, they only taught four days. They had an entire day to do all the administrative. Mm. They refuse. They do not allow you to work outside school hours. You are currently with um, some of the new union rules. Like you can't sub for another teacher. You can't fill, you know, like they're very strict on you being able to have time off. There's no paying for your own school supplies. It's not like in no. the U S where you have to spend your own money. Um, it's totally different. It is. It is. And, totally and, and from my own perspective as a parent as well, the way yeah. the, the, the kids experience it and everything else, it is so different. And and, you know, without getting too deep into it, security, big, big deal. Obviously, in the US, yeah. you know, we're not we're not going to into it, but everyone knows. Right. The, the major issue there. I mean, it's it's crazy that what should be the safest place in the world, which is school. Right. in the us is often one of the most dangerous places in the world and the teachers right. are right at the forefront of that i uh, but even from the uk where we don't have that level of risk um i can remember going to new zealand and dropping my five-year-old son off at school for the first time and it was a school in hamilton and it was a new school and there was a road and there was a grass verge and there was the school there was no steel gates there was no <laughs> big fences Right. It's literally buildings and fields and a road. Right. right. And me coming from That's the UK, I dropped him off at school and I said to the teacher, I said, how do you stop the kids like running out onto the road? And she said, why would they do that? That's stupid. <laughs> and, 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 and it was it was like I was like, oh, what an eye opener. So you, you literally tell the kids there's a road. Don't run out on it, you know. You don't need a totally. six-foot gate to do that. You don't need steel totally. fences to keep people out and stuff. This is so different to... It's so the, different, right. So different to the Right, US. just imagine I had four kids going to three different schools and they would just walk out the door in the morning and walk, bike, to school. Um, scooter, whatever they wanted to school. Yeah. I didn't have to do yeah. anything. I had to pick them up, drop them off. I mean, it really is hard to work as an, as an adult from nine to three every day. Try to get everything done before you got to go pick up the kids <laughs> and then go back to work when you get home. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But but also as well, having the, the shed, the big the big garden building that they'd have at the school with the, the bats and the balls and the skipping ropes and yeah. everything else. And the kids charge out at break time and just grab whatever they want and play. And if they fall over, it might, oh, they might hurt a bit because they fell over, but they learn, oh, don't fall over again. It's like, it's allowing kids to be kids. Yeah, and experience okay. life and to me that was my, my kids were one of the main reasons I moved to New Zealand to give them a better lifestyle more choice more options more opportunities and I have no regrets on that whatsoever 
I still think New Zealand allows children to be children. The teachers are focused on letting that child be the best that they can be in whatever it is they're good at. Not just like, oh, we've got to get so many kids through, but at this level, because we don't get funding if we don't do it. Yeah, look, that plays into it, the politics, but in New Zealand, there's less of it. If you're good at sport, push you at sport. If you're good academically, push you academically, you know? And I, I love that. I love the fact that kids in New Zealand are taught that they can be who they want to be mm-hmm. whenever they want to be it and go out and conquer the rest of the world. The big OE, the big overseas experience. That was a new thing to me. That was a new thing to me. Grow up in New Zealand, go through your schooling, finish school, do the big OE. Big, the yeah, big overseas totally. experience. Take, take what you've learned, go and conquer the world. Right. When you're ready to have kids, come back to New Zealand because it's the best place to bring them kids yeah, and so- repeat the process. Yeah. It's so cool. My kids loved it too. One thing that I noticed right away when I came was that the students, and this, my kids were in primary school at the time, would just talk. The students were allowed to talk and share their thoughts and their opinions and they're raising their hand through the whole day. Like we're, you know, we're, my kids are, you know, we, you listen, you only, you know, answer a question when you're asked, you know what I mean? Like very structured, <laughs> but here they're like kids are just, and I was like, that was really noticeable to me that they're just so comfortable. Right, just right, right from, right from, you know, early years, school, preschool, you know, that whole thing is, yeah. is just, it goes through the whole system. And the fact as well, obviously on the backside of that, qualifications are recognized around the world you know it's right. it's like say it's not a third world country you, you if you go to school in new zealand you go to university in new zealand the universities are in the top one percent in the world you know this is yeah. this is great and if you're a teacher and you want to be in that environment it is hugely refreshing especially teachers from the us you know um and a great fit for new zealand but i think you know in summary if you are in a good skilled occupation and you want to move to New Zealand there's never been a better opportunity you know yes. than now yes there's so many yeah. things and everything. <laughs> but get off the internet stop spinning around in circles talk to people who know what you need without right. pushing down the, yes the, exactly there's so much misinformation so many oh, things have changed there's so many more pathways now so many more risks as well so yeah so if you are interested in moving I have kind of a free course that you kind of start with kind of answers 80% of your questions. I'll put that in the description. Then you join our community and working in is in there. And we just, we get you sorted at every level. It's kind of a one-stop shop for everything. So yeah, if you're interested, the time is now. You should come. You should have an experience. You should get out of your bubble and try something new. <laughs> time is now. It's not quick. It's not easy because if it was, everyone would be doing it and New right. Zealand have a population the same size as america <laughs> so so you know new zealand is selective um but for the right people who are motivated and committed there is help and support and it's totally doable and you know more than happy to help anybody who's serious or interested so um yes awesome. it's absolutely pleasure well, thanks to you for again. joining us paul always great to have you on and sharing your experience and your down-to-earth um, personality it's great so yeah. All right. Thank you.